Did you know that the words you speak have genuine power to shape your future? How does that work? What does that look like? These are the questions we're gonna to answer today. Hi, everyone, and welcome to our Two for Tuesday broadcast. I'm excited again about another episode because today we're going to talk about the power of your words. Power of my words, too, but the power of our words. We talk about that quite a bit, but today I think it's worth talking about some more. And of course, we have my favorite Two for Tuesday guest, my lovely wife, Lisa. So let's just bring her in right now. There she is. Hey, Lisa, how are ya? I'm doing great. Good to be on the show again, Chris. Yay. We get to talk about kingdom stuff. And in particular, we're going to talk about the power of our words. So you thought this would be a good topic. I know you and I have been talking about it a lot the past couple of weeks. Where do you want to go with this today? Well, I'm just going to kind of warn those listening. This may go in a few zigzaggy ways, and that's okay. The Holy Spirit always wraps it around, so we're excited about that. But one of the things that the Lord has been really impressing upon me in my heart over the last months is that how we think is how we will actually end up living our lives. And one of the big parts about that is what are you saying when you talk to yourself? Mm. And he brought to my mind that I think carnally, and I know there's scripture about mm. carnality being the enemy of your mind, and also that would be your soul. And I just had to really think about that. And then he started bringing me teaching about how to declare things over yourself or confess things over yourself. And then he asked me just to listen to myself for a while. What are you saying when you talk to yourself? What are you saying to yourself, Lisa? Because... Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But if I'm not speaking things that actually confirm the word in my life, then I'm speaking against God's word about who I am, really. So then it takes you to a question of your identity, but we won't go there. I just know <laughs> that God just said, look, pay attention to what you're saying and what you're thinking and what you're listening to. And so we can talk a bit about that and how that looks and why that's so important. Yeah. And when we talk about our words, one, we have to understand that there's a lot of power in yes. creating our future. Uh, but also, it's so easy to get bogged down in speaking things that really are destructive and we don't even realize it. You know, one of the challenges I see or I run into is I'm a problem solver and I want to fix it. I mean, you know, <laughs> you're married to me. I'm always wanting to fix it. And that doesn't always work well. At the same time, that means that I'm looking at the gaps and I'm looking at what isn't there. And so I tend to speak the problem. And what does that do towards our future when we're speaking the problem, Lise? Uh, it creates a problem. It just adds fuel to the fire. If you can look at it like you're almost standing next to a bonfire. And as you speak the problem, you're just going to pour more gas on it, pour more gas on it, pour more gas on it. And you're hearing it and you're starting to believe it in your heart, which is a really big key. One of the things uh, the word says is that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I always used to think that was just, you know, somebody standing at the pulpit and teaching. And I would hear the word from somebody teaching. But the Lord said, it's not just that, it's your own voice and what you say to yourself. And in fact, your own voice is, is way more uh, influential in how your life is going to go and how things are going to go for you and what you think than anyone else's voice. Your voice is the number one voice that you are going to uh, pay attention to. And so mm -hmm. there's two things there, really, we could talk about real quickly, too, is understanding to hear the voice of the Lord getting to know the voice of the Lord better. But when you understand what the word says, you're going to know if it's God or if it's the devil. 
you know, whispering mm. in your ear. So part of words, part of our words is knowing how to hear God's voice. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Knowing God's voice and also understanding that Jesus was the word. So when I'm reading scripture, I'm in his presence, really. I'm listen. I can be listening to him speak to me through those words. And he was the word before he became flesh. That's back in Genesis, the word became flesh. But all that said, <laughs> you're going to pull it up, I know. It's also in John, yeah. at the beginning yeah. of John chapter one, where John writes, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Yes. So that's how the book of John opens, John chapter one, verses one and two. So right. that is... Jesus. And so you actually, I remember talking to you recently, you, God showed you something about Jesus and the word. Can you elaborate on that just a little bit? I sure will. I think I know what you're talking about. And if it's not what you're talking about, then we'll go down that road again. But there we go. I would struggle a lot with, I hear people say, you just get in his presence, just get in his presence, just get in his presence, just seek the face of Jesus. And it all felt very unrealistically unattainable. And I just never had experience like that, experiences like that, because I couldn't really understand what that looked like even. And I'm a very much of a person, what does that look like? And God, why are you? <laughs> yes, <me>? you <laughs> are. What does that look like? I don't understand. Or So then all of a sudden it was like an aha moment. The Lord said, hello, when you are in my word, meditating on my word, you're in my presence. When you're meditating on my word and you're speaking my word, you're seeking my face. And I was like, oh, you were the word before. And so the word is you. And it just all came together that, yes, I have been in his presence when I am going to the word and meditating on the word and asking him to show me more. I'm in his presence presence. I'm in his face. And I know that can look different too. You can be in worship and sometimes you're always in, you can be in his presence. When I know people, I have friends who, you know, have had other experiences as well, but the main one is just knowing that he is the word and that we are being conformed to his image. So we are being conformed to that word. Are we identifying with that word by what we say? Mm. And and let me jump in here real quick, because there's a Bible verse or two that, that lines up with what you just said. Right. And that's, I'm, I'm thinking right now of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, starting in verse 17, where it says, Now the Lord is spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. And that's the process that you're describing, Lisa. The more we get into the Word, you know, not only are we seeing Jesus, which we absolutely are, because Jesus is the Word, like you said, at the same time, we're looking into a mirror of who we actually are in Christ. I remember when I was a, a new believer and I was reading the Bible, and I thought, okay, this is the standard of perfection that I'm hoping to measure up to. But, you know, in my heart, I was like, ah, I probably never will. I didn't realize that what the Bible was describing in the New Testament is who I already am in Christ. It was revealing my new identity in Christ. And so when I said things, well, let's just back up because there's a whole issue, a side issue about our words that you and I have worked through and me in particular about not wanting to say things unless I really believed it. Can you speak to that? Because you've shown me some things and you've been trying to tell me for a long time. And fortunately, I'm starting to catch on now, finally. That's okay. I can say a lot of things. And sometimes as the wife, I can be the drippy faucet. So he just has to hear from the Holy Spirit at some point. And fortunately, the Lord helped us to get there together. But what he showed me was, he goes, you're not going to get to the place where you really believe it if you don't start declaring it and confessing it is when your own voice is declaring and decreeing what is true about you. And when I mean declaring or decreeing, you can create declarations over yourself that are the word themselves, really, when you're speaking over yourself. Like, for example, if I'm saying, 
by his stripes, I am healed. I am healthy and whole. My body is healthy and whole. And you can, you know, go on about different things about that, but you're speaking truth about your speech. So if you're speaking what Jesus is um, saying about you, what father's saying about you, Jesus never said anything. Okay. I was going to say, you just said we can speak over ourselves and you said some things that we could declare from the word. My question to you is, are we being a hypocrite if we say those things when our bodies are still going through symptoms? No. And the reason we're not being a hypocrite is because what you're doing is you're allowing yourself to hear your own words, what is true about you, the words of God speaks over you, you're speaking over it. Everything God created, he spoke a word to create it. Mm -hmm. Everything he did was by speaking. And Jesus spoke to the mountain. You start going through the scripture and you start to realize he did speak just about everything into place. And he did speak everything into place, not just about. And that made me really think, what am I speaking out into place in my mm -hmm. life? Good or bad. How many times a day do I tell myself I'm not good at the computer stuff? I may not be creating programs that may not be a gifting of mine, but the more I tell myself that I am not good at something, I will not be good at it. That's just a really simple one. Mm -hmm. But I, we watch professional athletes. They have all sorts of things that are declaring over themselves. They don't get where they're going by just speaking, not speaking what they want to be over themselves versus maybe where they're at. And that's a powerful tool that the Lord has given us, that our words are powerful, backed mm -hmm. by the scripture and what he says about us as sons and daughters of the Lord. So back to the, are you being a hypocrite if you s declare that you are healthy and whole when your body is evidencing symptoms? On the one hand, what we're doing is we're speaking life in so that we can get to that place. But I, to address the hypocritical, I'm just, I'm hitting this hard because mm. I wrestled with this for a long time. Right. We're not being hypocritical because in the spirit, which is our true identity in Christ, we are not sick. We are healthy and whole. So regardless of what symptoms are in our bodies, we can declare those things that are true about ourselves in the spirit and we're not being hypocritical at all. Right. That's just so important because if somebody feels like I'm just saying this, but really it's not true because I have these symptoms, then they're double-minded. And, and the Bible says that we'll never walk in faith that way when we're double-minded. We have to get this down that not only are we speaking to our bodies so that our bodies will improve, but we're also speaking the truth of what's true about ourselves in the spirit so that we eliminate that false perception of hypocrisy with our words when we do that. Yes. We're not denying that we would have a symptom. I'm not denying that my checkbook says this and there is a need for an influx of money. We're not denying a fact. We're denying it's right to be there. And as we begin to agree with what the word says about us, while we speak it out, not just read it, speak it out because your own voice is going to resonate in your ears and it's going to drop down to your heart faster than anything else. Mm -hmm. And that's when it drops down to your heart, boom, it like comes together and there's faith there's a faith point there and that's where you'll start to see things manifest more. It's not a magic formula. It's just the way God designed it to be. And as we begin to agree with what he says about us, as we begin to vocalize that and put that out there to him and hey, we're not convincing him of anything. We're actually convincing ourselves of it. We're actually bringing ourselves into agreement with heaven to get to a place mm. where we are fully persuaded about an issue. And as even if a symptom is still lingering there, we can still en enjoy peace and joy knowing that thing's not staying. Mm -hmm. And there's actually power in our words to affect the material world. Yes. And, and I, 
Go ahead. No, you go ahead. <laughs> no, you go ahead. No, you go ahead. Okay, I'll go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. I, I'm thinking of the, the scripture passage in Mark chapter 11. Mm-hmm. All right. That's that famous passage where Jesus, he's hungry. He goes and he sees a fig tree and he's like, oh, good. I can get something to eat because I'm hungry. And he goes to the tree. It looks like it should have fruit. It has no fruit. And Jesus actually curses it. Right. And, and he says, no one will ever get fruit from you again, which is kind of harsh, but he's basically saying, you failed your assignment. You were there to produce fruit and be fruitful. You're not fruitful. Therefore, there's no reason for you to exist, basically, is what he's saying. And he just walks on with the disciples. The next day, Jesus and the disciples walk past that tree again, and they see that it's withered from the roots up. It's already, it's dying. It's no longer alive. Right. And they comment on that. And they're like, wow, isn't that amazing? And Jesus replied, In Mark chapter 11, starting in verse 22, it says, So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes these things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Mm -hmm. That's how the kingdom of God works. When our hearts are in line with what our mouth says, nothing is impossible for us. We will have whatever we say. There's nothing about prayer in there and what he said right there. He didn't say that we have to ask God. You didn't put any caveats on it. The only caveat is that we believe that it's true. And then we say it, then we have whatever we believe. That's powerful. And I think, Lisa, this is where we get in trouble with our words so often is that we believe in bad outcomes. Sometimes we're pessimists and we believe that some bad thing is going to happen. And if that's what we believe, and then we start talking about how it's bad and how it's the bad thing is going to happen, we're actually ensuring that bad thing will happen. We're, right. we're actually causing it to happen with our words, which is amazing. When the world hijacks this from the Lord. I remember going to a business seminar and they talk about the power of attraction, the power of this, the power of that. And you're like, whoa, you guys are going off into Kukaluna land is what I would think. I'm not going to go there. But then the Lord's like showing me like they just hijacked and they're not, they don't operate with the Holy Spirit because we have the Holy Spirit in us as born again believers. We have the power of the living God in us. We are the heirs of our father. We're sons and daughters of the father so we are operating biblically in a biblical as sons and daughters of of god whereas you can kind of hijack some of those principles and still get some effectiveness not knowing god Mm. i know a lot of people who are much more positive than some of the christians i know and they seem to have better lives going on because some of these principles are just principles god put in place but we as born again christians who have the living God living inside us in our spirits, we, we are co-heirs. We have the kingdom. And, and we also have the heavenly hosts assisting us mm-hmm. there. I want to talk a little bit about that, and you can help me with that. But we have angels that are actually provided for us to assist us in our walk in, on this earth. How amazing is that? The non-believing world does not have God's heavenly host following them because we're the sons and daughters of the Most High King. I know he's pulling up a scripture for that because we want to ground that. We don't worship angels. Let me say that one more time. We do not worship angels, but they are heavenly hosts provided to minister to us and go out on our behalf when we speak. Yeah, I'm looking for that scripture. So just give me a moment here. No, that's a problem. I'll continue on that. And that was a big key for me, too. I'm like, oh, wow, I'm I'm really not operating in the way that Jesus operated. I want to operate exactly how Jesus operated. And he operated in exactly what the father told him and showed him. And so getting that understanding of understanding who we are and what God has provided for us, because we already have everything we need in our spirit. It's a matter of dealing with our soul mostly, really. That's where a lot of the unbelief and a lot of the mindsets and thoughts that are not of God 
have to be flushed out and renewed. Yes. And, and that verse I was looking for is actually in the first chapter of Hebrews, right at the very end. And it's in a section where the author of Hebrews is making the case that Jesus has a, a more prominent position. He's elevated above angels. And in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14, the author writes, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister those who will inherit salvation? And that verse is quoting from Psalms chapter 103, verse 20. So it's, it's pulling from the Old Testament a truth and showing that Jesus has a, has a better position than the angels. But in the process of doing that, it reveals that the angels have a role and they're assigned to minister for those who will inherit salvation. Well, who inherits salvation? Those of us who are in Christ because we believe in Jesus. We called on his name. We said with our mouths that Jesus is Lord. We believed in our hearts that God raised him from the dead and therefore we're saved. And that makes us those who inherit salvation, which means one of the big purposes angels have is to minister to you and me as believers in Jesus. It's something that we're really learning a lot about just as knowing how to understand and how to explain to people that we're discipling that this is who we are. The Lord has provided the heavenly hosts to minister on our behalf. And there's more to learn about that. But our words are very powerful because they're literally listening mm. for the word of God. They come to attention at the word of God. And when we aren't speaking what heaven speaks, they're, all they can do is sit there and go, okay, here we are stuck doing nothing again because they're not speaking out who they are and what they have. And mm, we, need a yeah. job. we can't agree with what they're saying. And I think it probably confuses them because they're sitting there watching, they're waiting for assignments, they're waiting for us to task them. And their background, their experience is heaven. Exactly. And think about it. God never says anything contrary to his will. No, he never says a lot of the things I say, and I won't speak for anybody else or who's listening here, but I really, I'm not trying to be like the word police or anything like that. I know I didn't, Jesus didn't only say the words that were in the Bible exactly. He didn't just run around quote scripture all day. I'm sure he talked about, oh, that food was lovely. Thank you so much. Oh, look at that beautiful flower. And he had conversation, but he was never disagreeing. Things never came out of his mouth that disagreed with what the father said about him and the goodness of God for us. And so we have to, as coming out of our, our flesh tries to rule us, and our minds have, been, have to be renewed to what that is, and then learn how to actually cooperate with those things. So it's been a really interesting time. I've found a lot of things I have been saying to myself, and again, this is not a mantra. Don't get the name it and claim it. Don't start labeling this like that. You just go read the scripture. What does the scripture say? What did Jesus say? And you can take it to God. I'm not going to go any further on that one. But I know for myself, and Chris and I have talked about this a lot as a couple, we have not really agreed with heaven on many things. And so there has to be a change there in order to see that change. And our part is just to agree. It's already been done in the spirit. So we're not earning anything. It's by grace. It's a gift. Mm. You need to cooperate with it, though. Yes. And so when we speak out things that are in agreement with what God says and his truth, then that releases the angels to go operate and minister on our behalf. Right. When we speak out things that are contrary to the word of God, their, their hands are tied. There's nothing they can do for us because we're not speaking the truth. We're speaking things contrary to the word of God. And I'm guessing that just throws in the angels into kind of short circuit. It tilts. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, go right. they, I, I want to share a testimony though. I just okay. keep going back to this. It, this happened when we were in Scotland and I'm going to talk about the KitchenAid. Oh, I know you were going there. Oh, you did. I just... 
I ruminate on that. I meditate on that. I ponder on that. I, whatever word you want to put it on, I just go, wow, Lord, you're showing me a lot in that testimony. When we were in Scotland, we moved into a house. We had nothing. We had to buy everything from the toaster to the toilet brush to everything. And so we shopped a lot. And of course, not knowing the different stores, we had shopped around to different stores and we were getting really fatigued. And we, by the time we were done, we weren't really done, but we had what we needed and we went forward. One thing we didn't buy was a mixer for making cakes and cookies and things like that. I had a beautiful KitchenAid back in America and it was stored away. It was a wedding gift of ours. And I thought, I'll look at what KitchenAids are like here. And it was American $600. I'm like, we're not spending that much money on a mixer. Not at this time. So I bought another mixer, as Chris Wells know, knows. He got, I brought it home. I was like, oh, I got this on sale. It was such a deal. And it was really a deal. It was like 80% off. But I know why well, it was 80% off. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I don't know how much of a deal it was. I think I it, was it was just cheap. It was cheap. I could get the cookie dough created, but it was not pleasant. A lot of times I was fighting with the bowl, wanting to pop off the stand. I mean, it just... It was a very cheaply made, uh, poor, uh, poor quality uh, machinery, but it did the job. One day, though, I was making chocolate chip cookie dough in the kitchen and it, the machine was doing its number. I was not happy. Chris came into the kitchen and I was frustrated. I think you said something to me. I was trying in my desperate husband, my wife is coming unglued. How can I fix it? I, I came in to say something to try to calm you down because you were getting a little bit frustrated. Yes. And um, he said something and I just turned around and I looked at him and I said, I will have a KitchenAid here in the UK. I will have a KitchenAid in the UK. And Chris said, I agree with you on that and I will stand with you. And I turned around and finished making the cookies. I let myself settle down. I didn't let joy get ripped from me. I just got myself back in peace. But I was like, I'm going to have a KitchenAid. And it just came out. It like came out of my belly, out of my heart. Mm. And I said that. So about a month later, we had been invited to some friends. They were students, actually, to their home. They were local students. They invited us over for tea and cake. And we said, yeah, we can do that. We have time. So we popped over. And Leslie was had made a beautiful cake. She, and apparently, she was an amazing baker, which we found out because we got to sample all of her goodies. And we were having coffee and tea and this cake in the living room. And I complimented Leslie on the deliciousness of this cake. I'll tell you why I miss those cakes. And she, she said, I asked her, do you really like to bake? And she said, I love to bake. I said, that's amazing. Well, I can you know, taste your results here are awesome. She goes, oh, do you like to bake? And I said, yeah, I like to bake. I especially like to make cookies. And she says, oh, would you like a KitchenAid? I had no discussion with anyone about a KitchenAid outside. Other of than me. Yeah, other than you. And I looked at Chris and smiled real big. And I looked at her and I said, as a matter oh, of Oh, I just started laughing. I just started laughing. I was I like, said, this is funny. As a matter of fact, I would love a KitchenAid. And she said, here's the thing. I My blender uh, died and I went out and I bought a different brand than I had, a KitchenAid. I've used it a couple of times and I really don't care for it. I really miss my old brand. And John, her husband said, just go get the other one and we'll find a home for this KitchenAid. Don't worry about it. I thought, wow, that's pretty awesome. And she said, I was praying, who Lord shall I give this KitchenAid to? And your name came up. I thought, wow, God loves everything that we, he hears our hearts. He hears the desires of our hearts. But it really, it was a great testimony then. But as I'm studying the word now and really understanding what happened there was that God could act on that because I spoke it out. Now, I'm not taking credit for anything in that I can't make a KitchenAid appear. That is the power of God. Okay. God spoke to Leslie through in prayer. God directed the angels to go and move, as I would say, the chess pieces around to get that KitchenAid to me. But I had one part, and it was just to believe God for it. You had two parts. Or two parts. Believe God believe for it. Believe God. And it out. 
And speak it out. Yes. Because again, what did Jesus say in Mark 11, 23? For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, whoever says to this KitchenAid. That's right. I will have a KitchenAid. Be removed and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes those things that he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. You believed in that moment that you would have a KitchenAid there in the UK. You didn't know how it was going to happen. You didn't even worry about any of that. You just knew it was going to happen. And that's what came out of your mouth. And it came out forcefully too. I remember. (laughs) I was very bold. And I have had you say to me, who do you think you are that you can just declare this and declare that? And I said, in and of myself, before I was born again, I wasn't anything. But now I'm the daughter of the God of this universe. And his word says I'm co-heir to Jesus. And I have access to the full estate. That's who my daddy is. So KitchenAid, a, 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 a nice mixer is no problem. That's right. Father. So I would encourage people as they're li- listening to this to just ask the Lord to help you pay attention to what you're actually saying out loud. What's coming out of your mouth? And he's going to help you to really start nailing down some things that he wants you to take in a different direction. He wants you to start agreeing with heaven on things instead of agreeing with the world on these things. He'll do it in a very kind way because that's who he is. And it's not condemning. It's just correction because he wants you to thrive. Amen. Amen. And I think that's a really good place to stop for the day because I'm looking at the clock. So would you be willing, Lisa, to pray over folks and just release an encouragement or or however the Holy Spirit leads you to pray? Father, thank you so much for this opportunity to share some of the testimonies of your goodness and your word with uh, the people who are listening. So anyone who's listening uh, to this uh, video right now, I just pray that as the Lord directs you, he will show you in the things that you may be speaking over yourself that don't agree with what his word says, what heaven says about you. And he will do it in a way that is correction and it's not condemnation it's for your good take heed and hear the lord on this pay attention to what he's showing you he wants to get things to you he wants to see things in your life um, manifest he wants to bring you things but he needs our agreement and you are going to be shown just things that your mind will be renewed on and it's going to be a really good thing The Lord just says, repent, that's all. I'm sorry, Father, for agreeing with that lie or putting flight to that mindset through my words. Help me go and agree with what your mind says about me and what your heart has declared over me as a son and a daughter of you, Father. And I thank you, Jesus, in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, thanks, Lisa. That was really, that was good stuff. It I'm was good sure. stuff. Yeah. I'm feeling pumped up already. <laughs> there you go. Yep. We're going to go and make some decrees and declarations. We're going to speak the truth over our lives. And I encourage you all, if you're watching this video, go and do the same. Go into God's word, find promises that he makes to you, and just say them out loud in your words, in ways that agree with scripture. Speak your own blessing over yourself from the Word of God and watch Him change your life. All right, folks, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.